Look, look, he's already smiling. Why? No, no, because whenever you start the fight, you always do that shit. Why? I can't be happy when no, I record? No, 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 what the no, fuck? No. What's wrong with being happy? It's <laughs> <laughs> <And then laughs> getting my mold. What's wrong with that? No, that's how he starts. <laughs> it's salt, salt poppy. <laughs> why? Like you? Why roll, can't I do that? You roll up to the camera so good, you're like, because I know I'm about to spit some shit. That's mm, why. Yeah. All right, buddy. Yeah. If, okay. <laughs> look, a basketball player goes onto the court. Is he gonna go with confidence or is he gonna go like? Oh yeah, for sure. You know for what I mean? Sure. Fuck facts, that. Facts. Facts. If if you're doing your thing, if you're doing your job, feel me. As an actor, do you approach the set confident or do you approach the set like nervous? Yeah, you have some confidence. Exactly. Mm, confidence. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it depends, like, what scene, though. Oh, because, yeah. like, if you're playing a character that has yeah. to be, like, sad, like, and you can't it, like, be confident. That's why we, if there's a heavy scene, mm -hmm. I don't talk to nobody. Really? I, gotta, like, I have to get in the zone. So have you, you have, to, like, you have, you have yeah. to, like, not talk to people? Like, I, if I, like, because if I have an interaction, it'll snap me out of it. I'll be like, oh, fuck. I'll be like, oh, shit. I'll forget. Like, it, it'll kind of distract me from, like, like, there's a scene I did. It was, like, I had to, like, cry. Yeah. So, like, what I do is, like, I think about like all the sad experiences I went through and like I try to like empathize with the character. Mm -hmm. So I have to think about that, I have to sit with it and I just let it like. Do you ever sit. do like self harm? Nah. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, see, no, because like if you think about it, like if I if I hurt myself, then I would feel hurt, no? But that's different from like physical. Yeah. Right? Like. It's like emotional pain is emotional, different. Emotional, like, like if you're dating someone and you know you're going to play like a depressed right, ass yeah, character, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to like break it off with them to like <laughs> that would be act sick, better. Though. Like it mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. Yeah, like when I'm on set, like if it's like a like a scene where I'm just chilling with friends or some shit, yeah. I'll, I'm going to talk to you like I normally do, like yeah. have fun, whatever. It's but you have to be like on game time still. It has to be, yeah, it still has to be like Word. serious, yeah. So do you, think, do you think acting in a certain way makes you become a person? And then you can decide whether you want to still be that person after. You, you become more like emotionally mature because you, you like you have you, to do you that. understand your emotions. No, because you understand exactly yeah. like how you would react yeah, into exactly, it. Yeah, exactly. that's kind of true. So like and like there's things like, oh, I thought that would make me sad, but it doesn't. Mm. It changes that as well. Yeah. Word. So have, have you ever had to play like a romantic role and you are yeah. like and you have to. Did you actually fall in love with the like the the person you're playing? Like, yo, with? that's a hot thing right now. <laughs> No, no, no. That, He's but in that, the middle of shooting one. Fam. No, no, but that, that's like a good question, though. Like, okay. this, this, that, that's the reason why so many co stars, yeah. like, get mm. into relationships. Because mm -hmm. they do, like, they're they actually like, fall in love. Yeah, they actually do. Because they have to pretend like they are and they, they're with each other every single yeah. day. So is like manifesting it then? Yeah, basically manifesting. That's why, like, you see, like, actors that are dating, they never works out. Mm. That's why Tom Holland and they are, like, together. Because think about it, they did. Three movies? Two yeah, movies, that's, movies a oh, that's a so lot of time. Oh, so it's like together. spending that much time mm -hmm. in that in yeah. that emotion yeah. makes you yeah. in love. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Because you know the the Mr. And Mrs. Smith story, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. So Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was dating who? Jennifer Aniston from Friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rachel from Friends. But the moment he started shooting Mr. and Mrs. Smith, he started dealing with Angelina Jolie because it was very like super romantic very in mm. intimate and shit and he ended up having an affair because supposedly right after the movie that's when they broke off and mm -hmm. they started dating that's what happens yeah. and they got married and everything so. Yeah. so all actors are cheaters huh i'm just kidding nah relax <laughs> nah, 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 relax nah, relax nah, nah, nah. but i don't know i feel like a lot of actors <laughs> could you really know their true self you have to though i, I swear you have to where you're, you're gonna um do you ever show your true self on camera i want to know that that's like uh, that depends. It depends, right? It also depends like what you do, like what you act in. Mm. Um, it depends if like it lines up with who you are. Yeah. Also, like that. it also depends like how good of an actor you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like the best place to really see um an actor's like true personality. Yeah. Are like interviews after mm. the movie. All true. Like yeah. how you know if they're like a good person or not is like how they handle their patience. Mm. Just think about it. when you do that. When, when I was doing my interviews, if any actor, like lead actor, is doing interviews for a movie, yeah, they're there the whole day. They're just yeah. like for like twelve hours, just sitting there answering the same fucking questions Damn, all the yeah. time. Like some actors, you'll you'll see them like kind of get annoyed and shit. Yeah, that's mm. when you're like, oh, you like kind of not truly like a like a patient person. Whereas like <laughs> I feel you. you watch like Keanu Reeves, like he's always like 
normal, like plateaued, calm, mm. and he's like happy all the time. You yeah, know? That's and you, like, it's difference. Yeah. yeah, no, that's why I fuck with like the interviewers that go out their way and just have a normal conversation because I feel like that's when you know, yeah, the real Yeah, yeah. it's not like oh. How how did you find acting in this role? It's not like that. It's like, what did you eat today? Like, oh shit! And then she he finally snaps. Yeah, because it's more person. it's more comfortable. Because yeah. you know I mean? feel like if you're gonna interview anybody, you have to kind of relate to them on some yeah. point, and yeah. then you can dive into deeper. Because mm-hmm. I think interviewers, their job is this is what's on paper. Yeah, fucking check off the box because that's what you're paid to do. Mm-hmm. But a proper interviewer would kind of like warm them up, feel me. Yeah, and then like you know tease them a little bit here, and uh-huh. then get them to do other things to speak their mind on yeah. the topics that they wouldn't usually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, saying this persuasion facts. One thing that surprised me though that you said. Because uh, you said that you couldn't do rehearsals and auditions in front of a friend. You would have to do it in front I of I knew I couldn't do that either. Fuck no, that. The, one thing, the one thing I remember, so I, we were in the living room and he, Carlos was like, yo, I'm going to rehearse my lines, right? And he was doing like this depressed ass role, right? And then he looked, he, he tries it. He looks up to me. He's like, bro, I can't. You're too happy. Bro. <laughs> yeah, he's like laughing and shit. Like, how are we going to do that? Yeah, like you, there's yeah. certain people that you can't do it. How, yeah. Why is that though? Like, It's like it determines like your comfort. Mm. yeah but wouldn't you be comfortable with a friend (laughs) but it's like it's like a different like on like a different no you know what it is (laughs) this is exactly what it is so so you know you know when we're playing roblox at one time okay with dino and we're playing like the 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 horror game but my roblox character had a spider-man hat (laughs) and like a halo suit (laughs) got you so dino's like bro you're ruining my realism Mm. so it's like that it's like I wouldn't be sad in this moment in front of you. In front of you, oh, so okay. it's not it's not true to myself. Yeah, because your body. I feel like to me, when you're acting, your your yeah. body knows. Your yeah. body knows if it's true or not. Yeah. yeah. And then like you put somebody in the room that kind of vibrates a certain way, mm. it just won't work out regardless. Because I think yeah. they just have that frequency just sets yeah. you off, especially like a homie you're really close mm. to. The, you know what I mean? the best person to do an audition with is someone you just don't really care about. Really? Because it's like you don't care what they'll they'll think. Yeah. You don't care if they're gonna judge you. And like frankly, there is the 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 aspect of like they're not gonna give you good feedback because they don't care either. Which is why like doing an audition with like your parents or really close siblings are like also really good. Really? Yeah. It's like a it's like a in between. It's like you have to find a balance between like whether you want the person to like judge you or whether you like you care to be judged or if you don't care to be judged. Mm. So like sometimes when I do like really like auditions where I have to like sort of like sweet talk a girl or something, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna do that with my mom. Yeah, it's weird. I'm gonna, pay, I'm gonna go to like you, you a, know, find like a, a friend and yeah. like pay or like yeah, a friend is fine too. But most most of the time, I'm gonna go to like to a session, yeah. just book for an hour, and then do it and mm. then leave. Has That's there ever right. been like a, a role you really wanted to play? Oh my god, um, <laughs> there Steven Spielberg's daughter was doing a movie. Is and she bad? Was, she, she was. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why? 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 <laughs> so like I, I I guess I guess she just like felt she wanted to like direct as well and like oh, okay. her dad's a director too so yeah. like, she had, already has an in in the industry mm-hmm. so she want she did and then she was like leading this TV show I forgot what it's called I don't know if I can name drop it low key but I auditioned for it and um the character was like really sick it was mm. like a story about like um how there's like an apocalypse and there's a virus that wipes out the entire population. Oh, that's fucking real. <laughs> yeah. But the only people that are immune are kids. Oh. So only like kids are immune. And you look a kid. Like you <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about that because your character is such like uh you can put it in like everything. You yeah, know? no, no, for real. But like, what Carlos says is like, how many Asian villain roles are there? There's not a lot. There's not, not a lot. There's not. But the Asian that gets beat up, yeah, they got you. They <laughs> that, are a lot. But that's a subconscious thing. Mm. Because <clears throat> Everyone who's writing stories and making movies, they were never bullied by the Asian kid. That's yeah. true. So why true. would they ever put the Asian kid as a bully? If yeah. anything, the Asian yeah. kid's always being picked on, mm-hmm. which just shows like what their experiences was, what they think is realistic. You know? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. But so, now everything's switching. Yeah. So hopefully, like I can make a, a breakthrough and shit. Because yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no like I was telling Gavin, there's no like dark Asian yeah. shit. Yeah. I guess figure. Yeah, Loki. If I got into the field, I would get more more parts than you because I'm that Asian that you can throw in and they'll bully me. But that's a role. Mm. That's like a heavy role they play. You know, mm. I can't play no villain. You know. Mm. Yeah, like it's it's very common to see like a, a Asian get bullied in this area. Yeah, yeah, I know, which is weird. Even in like the recent fucking, we were talking about this before. Uh, what's that show called? 
Chinese born American. American born Chinese. American born Chinese. Same <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. But the only problem I had with that it was it was like they're building up. They were they were trying to build up this show to kind of like represent this generation of Asian kids. Mm -hmm. But when they're doing that, they're bringing back all the stereotypes that came with yeah. the past. Yeah. Like so, they're trying to show. Yo, there's there's new times. We shouldn't talk about these old stereotypes, but they show the stereotypes show first. The stereotype, that's so yeah. stupid. Yeah, it's so dumb. Like, that's why funny. would you even have to show it in the first yeah. place? That's funny because I, the the recent feature I did was with Ben Wong, the lead. Yeah. So he he played uh, the other Asian kid that I'm supposed to beat up. It's it's a it's a long story. It's a long <laughs> story. But I never because that's funny because you told me about. About, about that show, about the show, yeah. And then, like a week later, I'm he has on to set beat him, him up. Yeah, I'm on set with him. I never asked him about it because I was like low key scared. But like, I, I like when I watched the first two episodes, I was like, yeah, like it. They're like bringing awareness to it, but at the same time, they're kind of like perpetuating what is wrong. Yeah. So what's and your take on Barbie? Yeah. 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 What's your take on Barbie? <laughs> <laughs> this guy hit. No, 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 no. It was good. It was good. <laughs> It, no, it was good. It was okay. I th okay, personally, I think it was. I think it was a good. It was a good. It was a good film to make. Mm -hmm. I think the switch from being like Barbie to serious, yeah, was like crazy, like so drastic. Mm. The moment, like, I feel like that's also like what they wanted to do because once they got to the real, real world, things got real. You know, mm. like it became more serious. Yeah, that's probably what Greta Gerwig was doing. But I think, like, if you compare, like, the beginning of the movie to the end, it's, like, a completely different movie. I mean, the only thing I don't like about it, and I see this in a lot of things, studios will purposely make fucking movies just to make everybody hate each other. And mm. that's what Barbie was. It was yeah. made to make girls and guys go against each other. Yeah. It was made to make them, like, disagree. Yeah. It was made to make, like, guys angry so that the girls get angry and the guys see the... I mean, the girls see the guys in a certain way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like they want you to fight. They even created division in like the movie theater. Like, oh, are you gonna see Oppenheimer or are you gonna see Barbie? It's like, true too. You're not that's cool if too. you see that one. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's not. I feel like that's. <clears throat> that's just marketing. It's just marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's just gonna drive more people to watch the movie. Yeah. Like both movies uh, anyway, and also like Oppenheimer is much more. It's like more of like a visual experience. Whereas yeah. Barbie's more like a It's like a fun shit. Yeah, 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 Barbie's yeah, more yeah, of like an fun. emotional like experience. <laughs> visual experience when the girl gets eaten out for like <laughs> five fucking minutes. <laughs> Very visual. I didn't even know that's in the movie. No, I gotta go fam, watch it. it I, I searched it up. It's I searched so it up. Awkward. And supposedly all the scenes together added up to like maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, Holy so shit. Which is really fun. Awkward. It was awkward, man. See, that's the type of... Yeah. I hate how like there's good movies that you have to watch, but you can't watch it with your parents. Yeah. You know those ones where you're supposed to watch something in the family room? Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, I, saw, and then, like, I saw so many comments that were like, I went to go watch uh, Oppenheimer with my parents, and there's like that awkward ah! scene. <laughs> Wait, and they're what? just sitting there fucking Yo. watching that shit. <laughs> Wait, I didn't watch it, but was it like silent and all you heard was like, <laughs> Yeah, like it's like close to it. Yo, fam. Because you have to like, I remember watching me and my parents, we would go to Blockbuster to get a yeah, movie, yeah. right? It would make you watch a movie, and I was always look at like, hmm, would this movie have a sex scene in it? Mm. Just so I can be like, okay. Let me try to predict when it's gonna happen in the plot so I can go time my pee. <laughs> so like, I walk out and go oh, pee. Wow. At least when I come back, like I missed it. So I don't have to sit through awkwardly and like look yeah. at my friends like this yeah. and shit. You know what I mean? Or the close your eyes type thing. And that's when you go on your phone. A lie. Yeah, 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 look, look, look away, look away. No, but but the first the first one I ever like experienced was when the, the Transformers one. Yeah. When uh, Megan Fox was running through the screen and like her titties were like going crazy. And I, that's when I like moved and I was like, I, they thought I left, but I was just watching it through the uh, like I was at the stairs. Word, I was watching it from the stairs, like in the living room. I'm like, yeah, I gotta watch this. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I was smart with it. So, like, if there was a scene I really wanted to watch, and my parents were like look away, yeah, I would look. I would look at the window. But, uh, why, but why the window? Well, so the reflection. The reflection, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're smart, still. You're smart. But bro, I was still watching that shit. <sighs> oh man, nah, but. There's a theory on Barbie. Okay. I don't know if you heard this one yet. No. Nah. But there's a theory that, you know Elf? Buddy the Elf? Yeah. The Christmas movie? Yeah. He was in it? So there's a theory. Buddy the Elf is connected to the Lego movie. And the Lego movie is also connected to Barbie, which is also connected to Elf. What the fuck? So check this out. So Buddy the Elf, what was he really good at? He was really, really fucking good 
with toys, making toys. Mm. But also remember that scene in the mall where he builds a huge like oh, yeah, Empire yeah, yeah. State mm. with Lego? Yeah. So you know how in the Lego movie, Will Ferrell, who played Buddy the Elf, uh -huh. was the big boss, the dad in the Lego movie. And then in the basement of the room, he had, he had like a whole city made out of what? Legos. Legos. Yeah. And big si skyscrapers, just like how Buddy the Elf would have made. Mm. Now, we know in the Lego movie that the, the boss dad, played by Will Ferrell, was a boss of some big company, and that's that's why he's like that. That's why he was kind of like treating his kid like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Barbie, we see Will Ferrell playing what? The boss. A the boss. CEO. The CEO. The CEO. Because also, if you watch the beginning, the intro of the Lego movie and the intro of Barbie, yeah. it's identical. Word. It's is it actually? Identical. Yeah. It's very close. It won't be like completely identical, but like the whole morning routine and mm -hmm. all that is like the same. It's insane. Now you want to get even deeper? Okay. So you know how in Elf, when he's traveling to the real world, yeah. what do we see? The sequence of like the, the art and then he's like um, trying to trek through the fucking snow. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we saw in Barbie, bro. So it makes sense. They use the same magic. Remember when they're leaving Barbie world and coming back into Barbie yeah, world? Yeah, yeah. It's the same type of trek. Mm -hmm. So Buddy the Elf used the same magic to make Barbie world. Didn't in the Lego movie, didn't they go through like different worlds too to get to place? Yeah, same shit. What the hell? Yeah, Damn, so it's all connected, fam. Crazy. It's all like a, a toy multiverse. <clears throat> what? It's like a toy multiverse, Lego movie. I understand Disney and, and Pixar and stuff, but that's crazy. Yeah, like those three <laughs> movies is like, I would not expect But it, it's like, just Will Ferrell lore. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's <laughs> but, just but a theory. The thing is, Barbie was written originally in 2016. Oh, really? Around that time. Oh, that's shot, when, I didn't that's know that. when. That's when, so that's when Lego movie came out? I, when did Lego movie come out? I think it was around that time though, 2016. Yeah. Remember that Everything is Awesome song? That yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. That was, that was like 2016. That yeah, was yeah, 2016. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's think. so, Barbie, the original like Barbie, the way it was written, I, we don't know how it, the way the way it was written, mm -hmm. but they wanted Amy Schumer to play the lead, mm. but she declined it because apparently it wasn't too feminist. Oh, too, that's like, why. Like it, apparently she said that uh, to like Mattel and Sony yeah. that it would that it was like scheduling conflicts but later in, like in a later interview she was like creatively it wasn't the same with me like i, I didn't like it or mm. something like that she was a writer she, or she was like made was, the lead she wanted to be the she she was the lead i think and then she also like took part in some of the yo writing, margot robbie's better over. anyway fam yeah, yeah. True. lucky she, she killed that role mm -hmm. she carried honestly I think if, if it wasn't for yeah. her, like, or Ryan Gosling, Ryan Gosling sorry. Ryan Gosling, Gosling sorry. I remember in the theater, I, like, Yeah, I, he like, carried, he I, carried. I, I, like, whispered over to Carlos, I'm like, yo, yeah. Ryan Gosling's carrying right now. He is, <laughs> Nah, simuli, simuli. <laughs> <laughs> he carried, he carried, bro. Chill, bro. We put some respect on our Asian brothers, bro. We're all Asian. Yeah, we're, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. It's <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, so, so. Wait, but, but, okay, well, what do you think about, like, um, rappers making movies now? Cause what rappers making movie? Travis Scott, Circus Maximus. I think that's just like uh, through the mind of Travis Scott. I don't oh, think. Oh, that like, wasn't the, because he went. He went to the theater and like he sat with people buying the movie. Was he in the? I don't know. I didn't watch. I it. actually don't know. I could comment say. down if you, if you watch this, watch the movie. I can't really say for sure. Okay, what's your thoughts on Utopia? Utopia. I love it. Really? I low key at first I was like, I was like. That's wow, what I'm saying. There's like two Yo, songs I like. Fucking it. It's exactly but, the Donda effect, dude. Dude, it's exactly listen, Donda. I listened to it. There's only two songs I liked: Parasail and um, uh, Till I, the last one, the very last one. I forgot. What Telekinesis? It's no, no, no. The one after that. Yeah, I know it's, uh, it's um something. No, or I don't know. No. Till I uh, something. The, the so that one and the last one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But right now it's like on repeat right now, and mm -hmm. I'm listening to like Meltdown, I'm listening to, like Fiend and other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. It's like it's actually not it's that. Growing, bad. It's growing, fam. Because you know what it you. is? It's just we're not used to the yeah, sound, yeah, and then yeah. the more we listen to it, we come on to that frequency of it. Okay, but what about Lil Uzi's new album? I didn't like Pink it at tape. all. I love Pink Tape. That was better than Utopia. I hate 100. it, though. I hate hit, it. If you, See, go hit, thing, if you go hit for hit. How, how different can it be? Yeah. No, but I think to. I think uh, later on, like, we're talking about long-term impact. Obviously, Utopia is going to, like, have more of the impact because yeah. this is just a Rager album. Pink Tape was just an experiment. I right? just don't like Uzi anymore because he's satanic. Yeah. Yeah, Bro's just fucking satanic. Tell. Like, yeah. I listen to it, I just don't feel the vibe. He's, try, he's trying to do Asian face low key. Yeah. You see, like, he, uh, the, what, the, what, the his hair really? and the. Did you not see his album, the the, the video covers? Like, he's got oh. Asian. It looks like that, bro. No, no, but no, 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 he's talking about. Like that. No, you know what it was? You know what it was? Because he, he called himself Leslie. Yeah, Leslie. You know why? 
No. Right. So you you know how like Aiden Ross is like, oh, Uzi just called me and he said I can only refer to him as, as Leslie now. Mm-hmm. He changed his persona to Leslie. Yeah. You know why? Because he went to Thailand. Now, oh. why is that important? Check this out. <laughs> You're gonna spit out your drink, bro. Check this out. Lady Boy? No way. Nah. Okay. Leslie is the name of the Asian guy in Hangover 2. Wait. Oh, wait, I watched it. Like, that's how you know the Oh, what the fuck? My voice changed. It was like robot. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the fuck? I watched that. That's like because we're using a different board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's um Hangover 2, the, the name. Leslie yeah, Chow. I remember it. Leslie yeah, Chow. The, the guy who kidnapped the, the wrong guy? Yes. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's why that's why Uzi's naming himself Leslie. because oh. you know, Why? Because he guy, went to Thailand man. and he was like vibing it out. You know yeah. what I mean? You wanted to be it's like Leslie Chow. It's, it's just inspiration. Just inspiration. But the, the reason why I fucked with uh, Utopia uh, after yeah. is because it's like, d- did you catch like the whole thing? Like what he was trying to tell you? Yeah, I said it on my story. No, no, no. Like, um, so Utopia, was, the whole thing was like, um, Travis Scott was trying to s- portray a Utopia, right? Yeah. And then at first, uh, he portrayed like he was neither in Utopia or Dystopia. He was just living his life, right? Mm. Because he said something of like, oh, the things, um, the situation we are in is neither good or bad, right? Mm-hmm. And then throughout the album, he goes to he tries to show you what a utopia is. And then the Drake song, yeah, uh, the girl was like, "I thought you were gonna take me to utopia." And then Drake's like, "This is a utopia." And then the girl's like, "No, but I thought it was supposed to be perfect." And then Drake was like, "Nah, this sounds perfect to me." So it's like trying to tell you like your utopia and your utopia might be different from mine, right? Mm. And then the billboards. I don't know if you caught this. The billboard said. Can I find Utopia in a liquor store? Can I find Utopia in a bank? That was Travis falling for fake Utopias. Like, mm-hmm. oh, how can I find my happiness in this and that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And then at the, end, and at the end, the, the bar where he says, um, because uh, he finds it. And then he says, uh, I can't wait to live in glory and everlasting life. Yeah. That's when he found his Utopia at the end. Mm-hmm. And then they gave you a question of like, oh, what are you going to do after this? Yeah. Which is fun. Like, after I, I, I seen that message, I was like, Respect, because mm-hmm. it told it told the story the whole way through. Not a lot of rappers are doing it. No, because my whole take on <clears throat> Utopia was that, fam, you can tell like he's been fighting spiritual. I said this on my story, yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. fighting spiritual warfare. Listen to the whole album and listen to the lyrics. It's all about like it's pretty much Donda, where he's talking about God. Mm-hmm. He's talking about going through spiritual damage and fighting demons and shit. Mm-hmm. Now there's this one piece in it. Where he pretty much talks about like um is the end. You know where he's like uh fuck, what's it? I'm gonna pull up the lyrics. Yeah. But he says, he's oh, he says, might as well turn up now. Fuck, let me get the exact <laughs> lyric for you. Right, bad, bad, bad. Let me play it actually. Look. Don't be a shit. <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, I'm just like, don't be a shit. Don't be a fire, bro. Pink to listen, a. listen, listen. Cause he says this. So, you hear what he said there? Yeah, the trumpets. So, might as well turn up now. He might pop up unannounced. Do you hear the trumpets? Do you like the way it sounds? Yeah. Isn't that God? You know what that is? Isn't that God coming down or some shit? Isn't that God? Yeah, so in the book of Revelation, in the or Bible, Jesus. fam. Jesus. Yeah, in the oh. book of Revelation, they say, during the end of the world, we're going to hear seven trumpets. <laughs> seven angels playing seven trumpets each, or one trumpet each. Now, I have a theory, bro. This is this is crazy, but I think Travis's Utopia album is all music for the apocalypse. Mm. No. I thought it was for people with shrooms. That too. <laughs> that too, but hear me out. So since we know, like in the Bible, it says we're going to hear seven trumpets. What if trumpets is a metaphor for a music artist? Because mm. trumpets, like, hmm. Trumpet, somebody would have played the trumpet. An angel played the trumpet. And what are what type of music do we hear now? We hear it on the radio. We hear it like wherever we're listening to it. Now, what if there's like seven people that will kind of spread this message? And once that seven person is done making their music, yeah. it's the end of the world. Which is fucked. So, so far, it might be like two out of seven or like three out of seven. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Ye made an album like that. Trav did an album like that. Maybe like Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Yeah, it's like it's like Marvel DC. So mm. on Marvel side, you have Cardi, you have Uzi, and you have Beyonce. 
uh, uh, DC side, you have the good people, like like you said, Yay, Trav, and Thing. Yeah. So it's like whose side you're really picking, which yeah. is scary, bro. It's scary. Yeah. Like I was listening to that song. Um, was it Telekinesis? Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. What if it? What if this is actually? What if this is actually the end of the world? Like, what if this is? This is straight up like the prophecy being fulfilled yeah and these are your last days I don't know. would you man. do anything differently like how would you live and i started thinking to myself like fuck would, is there something i really 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 want to do that i'm not doing right now yeah how would you live would you live different no no i feel like i'm doing the same thing i would yeah. do anyway yeah like mm -hmm. there's not really much you can do no. i think the biggest thing i i would change is like just being more purposeful with what yeah. I want to do. Yeah. Like I just don't want to just do random shit just cause anymore. Yeah. This guy says, yeah, but wakes up at 4 p.m. <laughs> Bro, I didn't wake up at 4, you too, man. You do that too, I, man. I, I do that too. Do that but, shit too. But I woke up early today. I woke up at 10. See, purpose. Do, do, you, do you ever feel like, okay, like, um, like, do you ever have that guilt where it's like, oh, fuck, I should try to get a routine now because like, I feel like I'm wasting. No. Or you don't feel like that? Sometimes I get that, bro. I, I've I've tuned into like a, cause I I, I work based off like contracts. Mm. So I'll work like a month, really hard, go grind, go hard, and then and then the next month I'll just rest. Yeah, that makes mm. sense. Like my parents haven't really cared that I've been waking up late, cause they know I've been like working the entire month before. Yeah, that's and, like, good. Now I'm just I'm just chilling now, you know. Mm. So like it's like it's okay, yeah. but like that doesn't mean, like they obviously get annoyed like. When when you're like saying at your parents, like, do they get mad if you're like if you sleep in? No, no, nah, my really? parents don't see me every day. Yeah, true. Okay. If, if, it's if, different for you because you see your parents every yeah. day, right? No, I think I think they would get mad if I wasn't doing something already or had I didn't have an income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. like jobless and I'm sleeping. Oh yeah, get off the fucking couch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Word. Yeah. That makes sense though. Yeah. If I was a yeah. parent, my kid was like not working at all and sleeping all day. Yeah, mm. come on, yeah. do something with your life. Yeah, that's true. We live in an increasingly automated world, but some things require tedious manual work. Luckily for e-commerce business owners, shipping is no longer a manual task thanks to ShipStation. With ShipStation, it makes it super easy to manage my business and all its shipping plans. It makes it super easy to compare all the shipping rates and help me get the best deal possible. Also, there's a free trial and it's a quick setup. So now is the time to try ShipStation if you've been on the fence. ShipStation makes it easy to automate shipping tasks for orders from every marketplace in one dashboard. Effortless integration everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. You can manage every order from one simple dashboard, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment and automate delivery notifications. With industry-leading discounts, you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping, get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates, and if that's not enough, use our promo code to try Try ShipStation free for two months. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year have become customers for life. So spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code JUMPERS, J-U-M-P-E-R-S, today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code J-U-M-P-E-R-S, link in the description below. This podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or growing your brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with their audience, and sell anything from products to content all in one place, all on your terms. With Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock their unbreakable creativity. Start with a best in class website template and customize every detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine, built in and ready to go on any Squarespace site. Squarespace makes it easy to sell all your merch and create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. You can design your products, your production, inventory, and shipping are all handled for you, saving you time and money. You can sell your products on an online store, whether you sell physical, digital, or online service products. Squarespace has the tools that you need to start selling online. And for all my content creators, you guys can host your video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content with beautiful video pages 
pages and sell access to your videos with member areas. On top of that, you can use insights to grow your business, learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. You can improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords or most popular products and content. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash jumpers to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash jumpers to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code jumpers, J-U-M-P-E-R-S. Your business was humming, but now you're falling behind. Teams buried in manual work, taking forever to close the books, getting one source of truth is like pulling teeth. If this is you, you should know these three numbers. 36,025-1. 36,000. That's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25. NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less. Close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One. Because your business is one of a kind. So you can get a customized solution for all of your key performance indicators in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need in one place. Trust me, guys, it's so convenient having the power of having all of the information in one place to make better decisions and the unprecedented offer NetSuite is providing makes that possible. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash jumpers. That's netsuite.com slash jumpers, J-U-M-P-E-R-S, to get your own KPI checklist. That's netsuite.com slash jumpers. Whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. Yup, we're talking each inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs, and as leaders in their field, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get that piece you've always wanted, and leave it up to the meticulous eyes of an eBay authenticator to make sure the watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get Get real with eBay authenticity guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit eBay.com for terms. You know how it was crazy? Like, um, you know the NPC thing on TikTok? Yeah. Where they go, chick, chick, thanks for the and apple. And they make money, chick, yeah. Chick, thanks for the apple. Like, taking a guy can literally oh, set up a camera. Oh, you can set up a buck to you and just like. Yeah, you can literally set up a camera and do shit yourself. Like, that's how that's how easy money <gasps> Ice is. Ice cream's so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ice cream's so good. And then did you see the guy where, um, so the guy was like, uh, there was a heckler. He was like, don't stoop to that level, idiot. And the guy, he was like, thanks. For he's like, the Miles Morales yeah, guy. He's like, he's like, what you say, bitch ass motherfucker? Don't ever say that shit again. I'll beat your ass. And then he went back. Thanks for the apple. Wait, is that the guy that says uh, hamburger with no mustard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, is that what? Okay, no, it's the Spider-Man guy. It's the Spider-Man guy. It's the Spider-Man guy. Oh, okay. It's the Spider-Man guy. There's like, another guy, there's though? There's another guy, and he, 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 was, he did that before, and he sounded really goofy, but it was really funny. I remember it was like, Right after COVID, he started blowing up. Yo, they're doing everything now. Anything, yeah. any like character, any <sighs> cosplay. Yeah, I see so much of them now. And bro, it's a hustle. Yeah, you know what I mean, might bro, as well do pa- it. Panhandling now has gone to TikTok. There's a guy with a sign yeah. saying, "Send gifts instead of outside sending money." No, send gifts. No, that's a thing. Yeah, pan- I, see, I I came across one, and it's like, it's like this guy, and they're definitely living in a third world country. Yeah. He has a bunch of kids in front of him and he just has a sign like, oh, I need to feed my kids. Can you send yeah. me money? I'm like, fuck. Holy shit. It's, yeah. it's, it's really come to this. But he's probably making money. He is making money. If he money. wasn't, he wouldn't be doing it. He wouldn't be doing it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess it, it's a good thing. But at the same time, it's, it's weird to see it in this format. It's like the world's going to change regardless and we're going to see it change right in front of us. It's just an adjustment period. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's shocking today. Yeah. Tomorrow it's regular. Next year it's it's old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I think the crazier stuff gets, it's gonna shock you less. Mm-hmm. You well, you get desensitized. Yeah. That's what the, yeah. Like low key, like I think a lot of kids now are getting desensitized a lot of shit. By like porn or what? 
porn, violence, everything. Like, facts. you think violence? I think violence too. Why I you think say that? Rap, music. Yeah, facts. Rap, music, like the things they listen to. Movies. Movies. True. But also, low key, like, I feel like movies have always been violent. Yeah. I feel like people still want to go to watch the thrill of violence. Mm. But it's a different, it's a difference when you like, when it's like, Real stuff you see like on the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like That's shootings, super, yeah. like stabbing. Mm. It's like that subconsciously is put into your head, and now mm. you're going out into the real world with that thought in the back of your head, like, oh shit, that's does that stuff happens. So if it really does happen, you're gonna you're not gonna be shocked. Like, oh my god, I never thought that would yeah. happen. It's it's like an occurrence thing. Yo, you know what they say? Like you should never watch the news in the morning. Why? They said they said the people they did a this is a real study. Yeah. But the people that watch the news in the morning turned out more depressed. Why? Well, because they all they, they have the crazier stuff in the beginning. Yeah. Right? Oh. Every yeah. time in the morning you hear like the craziest murder that happened, the breaking news, the most tragedy, yeah. and that's what you start your day with. Mm -hmm. So the rest of the day is pretty much dependent on like your first energy or the first like thing you grasp onto. Yeah. Get me? So let's say you start your morning. And you hit a jog, you're gonna be kind of motivated because you hit something. Yeah. But if the first thing you do is listen to the news and it's all what? Murders, yeah. depression, yo, we're in trouble, global warming, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna make the whole population what? Yeah. Fucking depressed. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you hear that? Okay. I'm gonna play you guys a video. I don't know if you remember this, but the 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 creepy guy from Subway, you know, you remember him? The guy, the the Grimace? main the main guy from Subway, Jared. So this guy. I had food and burgers that looked like this, and I looked like this. Then I found Subway restaurants. You don't remember this commercial? I I can enjoy lots nah, of I don't even remember it. Okay, so some Mandela effect. Yeah, right? no, so, <laughs> the hell is so that that guy named Jared, right? Yeah. He, uh, I think he went on a Subway diet and lost 425 pounds pounds or something like that, right? Eating Subway. Yeah, eating Subway. So Subway called him up and like made him the main guy, mm -hmm. and then. Right after he started um, going on tour, like he made this whole vow foundation to to like fight child obesity, yeah. right? So this is where it gets fucking weird because one guy he linked up with, he would do tours in like schools and stuff and like meet all these kids, tell them about like, okay, this is what you should be eating, right? Mm -hmm. So since they were on tour, right? Their office was, there was no one in there. So one day they decided to put a camera in the office, right? Mm -hmm. And Jared was totally different on, on these tours and off camera, you know what I mean? So one day they found one of their underage employees having sex in their office with their her boyfriend, right? And Jared, the main guy, he was like, yo, you know what? I think we should get more cameras, but we should put it in like children's washrooms and it's go around and see because he was so like he was obsessed with like children what this this guy this guy was doing on tours right so what they did they went around the whole city putting putting like cameras secret cameras in places where children would take nah. their their clothes off the bathroom and stuff like that and one day two of their houses got raided guess what they found in Jared's house a, a USB stick with 5.6 terabytes of CP, CP. Fuck. That's crazy. And that shit was on the news. That shit blew up because that was the main guy for Subway. That's fuck. Yeah. So he was like the spokesman. He was like the face of the Subway. The guy, like... That's weird, But bro. And imagine you're going on tour with, with these kids and that's what he does off camera. Like, you never know what's what's in the mind of some of these people, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like when you have like a big... um Stage? Yeah, you, you can... You Man, feel like, usually, mans are weird, bro. Yeah. In some way... Some way, if you have a big stage, you're weird in some way. It, like, it turns like something on inside of them. Yeah, like low a primitive key. thing. Yeah, you know, or like they're they're like a traumatic response. Like when they low were a kid, they're like abused or some shit. Yeah, because like, if you think around. about it, w do you think humans are naturally supposed to feel, I guess, like attention like that? No, you don't uh, think I so. I don't think so. I don't think. I so. don't think so either. Fam, when you're a baby, don't you want attention? And okay, say you popped, your mom popped out. I'm not talking sister. about attention like that. I'm talking about attention from like thousands, millions oh, of people. Okay. Yeah, people like you don't know. Mm. Okay, never mind. Because if you think about it, like long, 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 long ass time ago, the only people that really had attention were who? The emperor, the king, fuck, even like pope, I think that's it. The pope. The pope, yeah. Or just, like your strongest warrior. Just really, really yeah. important people. Yeah. And I wonder. I wonder if, let's say, you evolved into that person or, like, let's say your ancestry comes from, like, not having that or having it, how you would have turned out? Damn. 
Yeah, I don't know. That's crazy. So you're saying it, it comes with from your ancestors? So like, I don't know. That Jerry so guy say, only like, was a child. Did you feel me just because their ancestors were? Let's say like somebody was like a tribe's leader. Yeah. And then their kids are probably used to being important too like look at the fucking the royal family yeah like everybody in the royal family is used to being royal or it's just their like skill set that caused them to be more popular or have more attention like um like speak public speaking skills yeah you know what i mean like maybe a tribe leader would pass down his public speaking skills to his kids and his generations as they go on and like one of his like um ancestors becomes like a comedian because he's so good mm. at public speaking i don't know true stuff like that uh, maybe it's all tuned like that true and maybe like if you're if let's say your your tree like your ancestry tree is like isn't like tuned to like what you're doing you become more weird mm. yeah and i think i think the fucking like the leaders back in the day they're yeah. definitely fucking weird bro they're yeah. weird probably weird there they was, probably uh, just did shit to do there shit. was like a, a a king in korea i forgot what his name was the cult leader or no, 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 no. This was like way before. This oh, was like, okay. So this was before. Um, this was even before. This is like the 1700s, 1600s. Yeah. This was before like China invaded. The mm. Manchurian dynasty invaded. There's a king, and every night after he heard like good news, bad news, like he'd hear news. Yeah. He would do a cleanse with water. Like okay. he would spit into the water bowl and then like cleanse his like ears and like nose, his eyes and his mouth. Well, why? I don't. He said like apparently the the things that he goes through throughout the day, like because he's a king, it's easy for evil spirits to be attached to him. Mm. So he he'd do that routine, but mm. eventually it just drove him insane. Yeah, just from doing the routine, or just yeah. like everything. Everything. Damn. So water is the cure because remember that story I was telling you about about the ghost. Yeah. Like some like guy heard a ghost like moaning. On the outside of his front lawn, and he boiled the hot pot of water and he threw it, and then it was gone. Oh, he started screaming! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, he was speaking in some language, like cussing him out. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, funny. so so water has been like the natural cure. So it's like, do you ho- think this holy water? That's, that's what I'm saying. And, and holy water, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yo, if you think about it, because I had this theory before. I think I think I said this on the podcast. Mm. But what if like, what if like God is like water? Because water is everywhere. Like it's in the air. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, we're made up of like seventy percent water. Seventy percent water. Exactly. So we're like, we're made of mm-hmm. water. No, like if God is water, you not know saying. Now oh. check this out. Where where did Jesus get tempted? In the desert, mm-hmm. where there's no water. water. Damn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, Bars. right? Bars. <laughs> is that kind of crazy? That is kind of crazy stuff. Because what if it has something to do? Because water is kind of water is life. No, mm-hmm. like it, you can't have life without water. Yo, what y'all think about the new uh, alien, alien uh, thing? What? The they 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 confirmed there's aliens. Oh yeah, they confirmed. Nobody yeah. gives a shit though. That's I wrong. know, which is crazy. It's crazy because like the minute the government says they're real, <laughs> no one believes them. Like the entire time before I they're know. denying it, they're like, no aliens are real. And then now when <laughs> a, a U.S. like Secretary of Defense says it, no one believes him. It's <laughs> when it's crazy. like confirmed true, when it's like, confirmed true is like nah, that's not. Because I think the problem with that is like. What are we gonna do? And what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Okay, it's, it's real. No, fact. What do you want me to yeah. do? <laughs> no, because people are gonna continue their daily lives until something happens. You feel me? That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna continue my daily it's, it's life. It's not gonna until affect. I... It's not gonna affect you until it's like in your face. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But do you think it's gonna be like, say, aliens come down right now? Do you think they're gonna come on some like, okay, we're raiding you, like get out, or it's like, oh, we come in peace? For me, for me, there's only <clears> two. <throat> There's only two very realistic things that would happen if aliens were like more intelligent than us than we think. One, they're too smart to even care, right? Okay. Like, I think, think they care though. No, but think about this: when we see like bugs, do we ever think to talk to them or like? No, interact with them? that's, that's a, good a good point. point. It's like that's a good It's just point. a bug. Like I'm, I don't care. Like you go do whatever you want. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. Get away from me. Real shit. Right? What if aliens are like that? Or there's another theory. If aliens were ever to invade, they'd only invade for water. Because mm. it's life. Because it's life, right? Not to say, like, if you think about it, we're car- humans are carbon-based. Like, our world is carbon-based. If there's, like, another, like, silic- silicone-based, like, planet, a, a, like, a common, like, compound would be water. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oxygen and hydrogen. Oh, shit. That, yeah. is, that is good, But, too. like, the, the theory that my dad really believes in is that we're the only intelligence. 
like intelligent. That's like, what he believes. He believes that we're like the lottery. Like we're the. Cause That's what my it. dad believes too. Yeah, my dad believes that because he's saying there's so many small steps that got us, get that got like for our like for our evolution to like be where it is right now. Yeah. Know? For even for us to even have a, like an uh, like a, a sense of communication, mm. right? That's so true. Yeah. It's That's like fog. It's like once in a life. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally once in in a universe. Type and shit. like if and like if if there was another like species like that, they'd be so far away. Really. I have a theory. I think I really believe like aliens might just be us from a different timeline. Mm, okay, I had that's a Scientology. One. Is that what it is? That's Scientology for real. Sci- Scientology is the belief that we are a species from another planet, and our planet was dying, so we sent over, um, we sent over our own species to evolve and like repopulate this planet. That's Scientology. No, I'm saying I'm saying like aliens are. Us traveling not from different planets, but different dimensions. And dimensions, oh. as in, because you know how the universe is constantly expanding every second. Yeah. And they say it's it's expanding faster. Yeah. It's because, you know the theory I say where, like, we create more alternate dimensions with every decision? Mm-hmm. Every decision creates what? Another universe. What if somehow people from that universe can come to here? But... It's so it's a little bit different in a sense of like their technology could be different, like it's, their way of thinking like could be different. Interchange, intertwining with each other. Yeah, and them coming here kind of disrupts it, and that's why we have like Mandela effects, and that's why we have like things that changed. It's not necessarily they're different species; they're us, but from a different dimension. So that's why it messes things up, mm-hmm. and that's why they can't interact with us because it might just break the fabric of reality. Yeah. So you're saying everyone's an alien except different dimension no i'm saying people from different dimensions aliens. Oh, okay yeah, yeah. Okay. y'all heard about spacism no, no. it's not <laughs> what the fuck is that how like if we if we were in like contact with aliens how we would be like racist when in a, in a species way i feel like that's that's yeah. a given though no? yeah because we would see someone that's yeah okay say for the the cartoon alien what the fuck is that you know no because i think about it like this fucking like a spider <laughs> If I see a spider, I want to yeah, like yeah. kill it. That's no, not, for no reason. Human, yeah. Spider didn't do shit for me. <laughs> like spider, spider just doing its thing. It, it's yeah. a little bit scary to me, but I just want to kill it because it's not supposed see, to be out here. But that's the thing about about the idea that aliens are real, but they just don't want to interact with us because there's nothing for them to gain. Mm, I, I believe nah, though. I, just, I believe, I believe that. though that there there are a few aliens on the earth. They're just disguised as us. Yeah, I think that's the scary part about the news with you know aliens mean? being here. I think that's the real scary part is that they could just be in, in disguise the whole exactly. time. I like could be say, an alien right now. Yeah, like say like a uh, go you go to Veld or like a uh, uh, Rolling Loud. You think all those people are actually real people, bro? Maybe that maybe one person in there is just trying to get like info. Like that's oh me. this this is how they act. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't fall for his bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, what if one day like I just you you no that would be crazy. I, that's fucked, right? That would be crazy. Imagine this whole time like yo yeah. that's why because maybe <laughs> like um you know what a skinwalker is? Yeah. I, I really believe that those are not even like spirits. Those are just like aliens because they can form into like they can go into like thing and then they have a tail and stuff like that. So that's mm. not a human. That's not a spirit. What else could that be? Yeah. You know what I mean? It could yeah. still be spirit though. I feel like what if spirit is also dimensional? Mm. You get me? What yeah. if it's, that's also like a dimensional thing? Maybe a, a skinwalker is like that. It just It's a spirit that took into alien form. I don't know. It's so hard to know. It's a, the fucking the yeah. universe, yeah, right? It's mysteries. I, I wonder why people always like when they think of aliens, you think of like things that they don't look like us, but it's like they have legs and arms. Yeah. I think if aliens were to be real, they wouldn't even have that. Like they'd have. Nah, I think they would. No, I I think they'd be some sort of other other form. They would look like. Oh, like monsters Inc. <laughs> low key, like they would look something like that. Like depending on what they're. Like what they like survived off of, what they evolved from. Yeah. Mm. Like if it was like a water based planet, they'd look more like a I don't know, like a mermaid or like a Damn. fish. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And yeah, to think to think that that kind of like fish would have the intelligence of a human and they have like a civilization is crazy. Mm. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like it doesn't necessarily have to have arms and legs. Like it can it can be like a completely like different animal. Yeah. Yeah. Like what if what if they're all cat people or like yeah, dog exactly. people? That's so crazy. But, but the media portrays it like, oh, this is what an alien actually looks like. It's just like a green blob. But what if that's, <laughs> that's the truth? 
I don't know. What if that's that. actually the truth and then it's it's just like broken telephone? No, but then maybe that's like, that's their way of disguising. Oh, this is what you think an alien looks like? Whole time, it looks like Carlos. No, theory right now? Yeah. What if all of those movies about aliens being green or looking a certain way, even like the Star Wars mm-hmm. aliens, what if that's all placed for us to get used to the idea of aliens? And then we don't get so shocked. For example, uh, like desensitization, yeah. and then we're more comfortable so that the time they do come, or the time that like they want to interact, yo, that makes sense. We're not gonna like be so fuck fucking freaked out, you low, know? Low key, everyone's already desensitized to aliens right now. Like, yeah, so really like, shit, bro. If, if, if an alien does come out, and then it's like, oh shit, it's it yeah. will be just like a celebrity moment rather yeah. than like a whole mind shattering moment. Yeah, another big one: zombies. They've been desensitizing the fuck out of zombies. Uh, the Last of Us. Uh, what else? Walking Dead. Walking Dead and the the ch- Dawn the, of the Dead. What's the Korean one? Oh well, um, uh, Train to Busan. Train no, to the Busan. other one. Uh, the, last, uh, all of us. All yeah, of us all are of dead. All of us are dead. Yeah. Oh my, they, that's already f- like five movies we can name at the top of our head. But that is. Uh, but then you go with vampires. Like there's hella uh, vampire yeah, movies. I, I just think I don't know. Zombies are like zombies are so much easier to to like sell. Sell. I think that's what it is. It's just people, like a trend, yeah, and then maybe. like they run off the trend. Like aliens and, and like zombies and stuff. Think about it. the movie Alien, like yeah. Predator, mm-hmm. Star Wars. If you think about people, just like people who love movies, grew up with that kind of that, mm. that sort of sci-fi yeah, action. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's natural for them to follow movies that are similar to that that come out now. It's yeah. so that's hard why to they keep yeah. making it. Yeah, because for example, like horror movies, like ghost movies. Yeah, it's always gonna sell. It's always gonna be a thing because yeah. people believe in. The Spirits. taboo of it, yeah. and like you know, what I mean, the mysteries of it. Yeah. Same with aliens, same with zombies. And at some point, one thing's gonna be trending a little bit more than the other, mm-hmm. which would have been zombies at the time of Walking Dead, yeah. vampires during the time of Twilight. Yeah. What do you think it is right now? I don't know. Disease right now. Technology. It's technology. But what movies are technology based? Bra- Black Mirror. Okay, that's one but, movie, but, that, but that's like one. That's like one show. That's like yeah. one series. Oh, that's, so. that's not even a movie. That's a show. Okay, it, wait, it, wait, wait, hold on. Superheroes. But that's always been around, though. No, no, no. But it's more prominent right it's now. More oh, prominent yeah. right now because apparently, sup- the superheroes align with how the economy is doing. So if the economy is doing bad, people will look up to like a singular figure. Oh shit! <laughs> Yo, because, um, you know why he's so right on that? Yeah. Because Captain America was made. As World War II propaganda during the, the mm, Great Depression, I remember like yeah. right before it. He's yeah. like the first superhero. Yeah, yeah. same with Superman. Yeah, fuck, yeah. that's crazy. So like the the fact that it's like come coming back right now, but I think the difference is if you look at like shows like The Boys and Invincible, yeah. they're doing the superhero thing, but they're adding a touch of like realism to it. Mm. Like like Brightburn, mm-hmm. I think like Brightburn is like one of my favorite movies because it's like if. That, like if Superman was like legit in our in our world, that's what he would turn he out to be. You, you wouldn't he wouldn't be good. be good. Why would he have all these good values if he's an alien? If he's like true, if he's true. like literally like the better species, like the better like like yeah. How would he treat everyone? Like why? Else? There's no reason for him to treat anyone with it's respect. It's like Minecraft creator mode. Yeah, like, exactly. You're gonna like, really you take care of the chickens and you're shit. Not gonna care about villagers and shit no damn Damn. so do you think um movies are good tell especially the movies that are doing good is a good tell of how the population is doing mentally yes i think it is too like what everybody's trying to watch yeah and it it brings it all the way back to barbie like that's why yeah that's that's why they have to make that movie because they know it's gonna do well because people like the controversy bro controversy sells controversy sells it's just i think we just have to be more aware of what we're buying and what we're buying into to have good like self-awareness of what we are like why am i subscribing to that shit Mm -hmm. is it because i am that or is it because that's what i'm told to do or is it because you know i mean it's a trend like what is it but in the industry right now there's a different sort of aspect where if it's a really good show it can change the way the industry goes it doesn't necessarily have to be outside factors that's very true if you guys watch succession Mm -mm. right okay so there's a show called succession it's (laughs) It's a TV show about literally an all-white cast. Okay. It's about white, rich people mm. and their drama. Mm. Think about it. Who would want to watch a show about white, rich people yeah. and their drama and their personal issues? The only reason why it did so well is because it was written well. Mm. The writing was perfect. The story was perfect. Everything, the acting was perfect. Oh, they only need those, needed those three factors. They didn't need no outside. Mm. If anything, it went against 
the grain. The, it, it went against yeah the agenda of uh, the agenda of what most films are looking for now, which is like having a diverse cast, having having yeah. like you know a, a certain aspect of of, of diversity or like a, like pushing a pushing a message. Whereas this show is just about white rich people yeah. and like what what they do in their daily lives mm. and like the the shit that they have, they have to go through. And then those are like the groundbreaking ones that change culture. It changes culture. Yeah. yeah. Damn, that's very true. Because if you think about it, that happens in music all the time. But yeah. I feel like music is easier to see that. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Because one, one guy will do it and then everything, everything's we black, all wearing all black. Everyone's opium now. You feel me? Because I think <laughs> music is so much easier to consume and shit. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Music is so easy to consume. Like you can hear it in the car for, it only takes like three minutes. Yeah. A movie, you would have to like to put yourself it, down. Yeah. You have to and, sit down and watch it. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yo, did you watch, um, you know the movie The Others? No. You ever hear about that? No, I, heard I haven't. That. I didn't watch it though. Yo, so I just want to talk about this. Fucking, this is like the most mind-blowing movie I ever watched. What is it about? So pretty much there's this woman and she's staying in this house with her two kids and she has like three butlers, like nanny and butler. So throughout the movie, her kids are allergic to the sun. So they can't go outside really. Even her, I think she doesn't go outside too much. But... The nanny and the butler, they're taking care of the kids. Throughout the movie, there's things that are showing her the house is haunted. Like curtains would move, curtains would be changed, um, things would be out of place. There's a piano that would play by itself, turn off, whatever, right? And then she thinks like, oh shit, it's haunted. Like, let me look, look into the history of the house. Mm -hmm. So she comes across this picture and on the picture, it's the nanny and the two butlers. Yeah. But they're dead. Like, this is from, like, early 1800s. Now, it gets fucking weird. Because I didn't, I didn't see this, like, turn in the movie. But what ends up happening is she's going out looking to find out why the house is haunted. She thinks it's because of those, those uh, fucking the butlers and shit. They're just spirits that have been there longer than her. Mm -hmm. And they're still living there. They're stuck in, like, a limbo. She goes upstairs at the end of the movie and the kids follow her and they see a table with like several people around it holding hands like this. What the fuck? And they're doing what? Ritual? Damn, they're doing a seance yeah. to try and make the ghosts go away. Oh, hell no. So they are the ghosts. The mother and the kids are the spirits that are haunting the house. Oh, so it's like oh, reversed. Shit. Yeah. Oh, that's a crazy plot twist. It's crazy. Damn. So this whole time you're led to believe like, oh, that, <laughs> the house is haunted. Why is it haunted? Yeah. Damn, they're the ghosts. And then it's so sad because like, they're doing the sand shit, right? Yeah. And then the mother's like screaming at the table like, we're not dead. We're not dead. And the kids are crying. We're not dead. Yeah. And then she's like grabbing papers and ripping it. And then in the perspective of the people doing the seance, they're like, yo, what the fuck? Because yeah. it looks like ghosts doing that shit. Yeah. Mm. That's Crazy. Fucked. Crazy, yeah. fam. <laughs> I don't know about that one, bro. Have you, have you encountered any, like, scary shit or paranormal shit in your life? Yeah. You have? I think I blocked it out, though. Oh, you blocked like it? Like, how? There's, like, you tried to erase the memory of it? It's just like, what the fuck? Because yeah. um, you know what, JB, like, he was so down to do, like, rituals and shit. He was God, so I'm on board. <laughs> nah. But but that. I saw Ethan's reaction when he's like, yo, let's do it on camera. And Ethan's like, nah, I chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, I used to live in, like, a townhouse. Mm -hmm. and it was, I think it was, it was really old. Yeah. It was so old. Um, but you know, you know when you dream and you, like, run, but you can't, your feet are stuck? But, yo, all the time. Damn. Dude, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. I just remembered. It just came back. <laughs> yeah. So my bro my bro I have a younger brother. So he was born in 2015. I was like grade five at the time. Mm -hmm. So we had like a 10 year gap, 11 year gap. Mm -hmm. So when we were in that house, my brother had just been born. So my mom bought my mom and dad bought all these like newborn stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. Baby stuff. There's like a baby cradle. I remember there's a specific baby cradle. It's like it's like on the floor. It cradles and it has an electric motor at, at the top to move it to move it to like slowly cradle it and it'll play music. Yeah. So I remember, like way before my brother was born, 
I'm at the same. This is at the same house. I had a dream. I a very vivid nightmare. Yeah. And it was I. I was in my basement because my basement was where I played like video games and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like I had the PS3, the yeah, PS2 yeah. set up there, and I played. I played COD and shit. Yeah. But I remember like in my dream, like I was just leaving the basement. It just started off from there, and like for some reason I couldn't get up the stairs. Oh I got my shit! Stuck. I look back. And there's like this girl in like a white dress. Oh, the no. white lady, the white lady. No, 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 but she was like young. Like it was like a it was like oh, a kid. Never mind. So like I was like freak I woke up, I was like freaked out, whatever. And then after my brother was born, there's like a baby cradle in my in my in the, in the basement at yeah, the time. Yeah. And I remember I like I wasn't home alone. My mom was in the kitchen, but I went to go play games oh, yeah. <laughs> downstairs in the basement. Don't tell me, fam. I walk down to the basement, I hear like music. Like baby no. music. No. I'm like, what? What is that? Like, am I tripping? Did I leave the TV on? Holy! I like, fuck. I like did, did I leave the TV on? Yeah. I walk down, and like, it's the it's the hallway, and it's the the room, and there's a wall, and it goes like out. So yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. See anything on the right? The baby cradle was right at the end of the. Yo, the- chill, chill, I'm getting chills. I walk through. The baby cradle is moving like that's crazy. Like fast, fast. That's and crazy. I, I'm like. Am I seeing this right? I thought I was tripping. I walk closer. It stops. No. I run away. The- I run away. That's Fam, fucked. I run the fuck. Like, I run out. Like, it. that, like, did a full circle because that's when I'm, like, walking back up the stairs. Yeah. Right? So, like, I was, like, worried, like, my feet were going to get stuck or some shit. But, like, I, I fully, like, I remember, like, I, I was so, like, tripped out. I didn't think if it was real or not. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So, I never brought it up. Wait, so this wasn't Holy a dream. Shit. So you didn't wake no, up like no, this was no, real. No, no, this was legit. Cause like I remember going out with my day afterwards and I was like, oh did that actually happen? Like, <laughs> no. am I too young? Cause you know when you're like a kid, and yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, know, yeah. you don't and, like, remember. Things like happen and you're like, they get distorted. But Loki, as a kid though, you see more shit. Yes. Than, dude. Yeah, so that's what right. people say. I still like, remember as I, hear a the, kid, I heard the music I walked through and that thing was like moving. And I took a step closer and it stopped and I just ran away. Oh, Damn. The, the fact that it stopped Scared. right out there. Damn, that's, that's, so that's us. That's us. Lo- what, Loki, your mom like cranked it up hella and then, like, <laughs> she timed it like, oh, Ethan, can you get something in the basement? Nah, that's nah. crazy. But, <clears throat> but the thing is, even even if it it was timed or anything, yeah. it, wouldn't it wouldn't be moving wouldn't that much. that fast and stop suddenly and turn yeah. off. Speed is crazy. Speed so is- the music was playing too? Because when it when it when it moves, no, nah, that's the, scary, bro. That's, that's fucking, fucking scary, yeah. bro. Is this the house that you live in right now, or no? No, no, I moved. Okay, okay. I moved like I moved way back. Yeah, way back. I didn't want to go back to that house. Did you uh, did you have like any history on the house? Like, cause you know, like the the story is like, oh, this was built on like ancient ground. There, like, <laughs> maybe I don't know, but yeah. um, the town like the the neighborhood I lived in had the name Old in it. Oh, like see? Old. Oh, so it's like an yeah, old, like it's an old, old blank? Yeah. You'll, you're, you're, you're so did, you, did you have any other stories of the house or is it just that one? No, uh, there was one. Holy but I think it was like, so in in my bedroom, I had a bunk bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't ask me why. Like, I didn't have any siblings. I just, I just felt like I had a well, <laughs> bunk bed. It was weird. Anyway, the room was small, right? Uh, yeah. The bunk bed was big. So it took up a lot and it created this hallway and it created this little like small pocket near the window. Yeah. So I put all my my toys there or whatever. Remember, I'm just playing with my Legos and shit, sitting by the like the bunk bed. So like the bunk bed is like here, the window's here. It's a little pocket, and the door goes out this way. The hallway's this way. Mm-hmm. So I'm like safe in my pocket, and I'm like leaning up against my bunk bed, and then I look down to my left because I heard something. Like I I heard like 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 that. No. Oh, fuck. And then and then I look I look down. Yeah. And um. Do, do you, you know the spider coats? You know the 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 weather coats, the the weather jackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Spider logo on. Yeah, it? yeah. So my dad was like really into those. Like he bought those a lot, a lot when when it was like back like back then. Mm. Yeah. It was that zipper. You know the zipper. The with the spider. With the spider on. Yeah. It? The like the zipper. Like it wasn't the full jacket. It was just a piece that you you clip like you hold and yeah. you like zip up, yeah, up yeah. and down. Mm-hmm. It flew out of the bunk bed. At the bottom, like near closest to the closest to the 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 wall, yeah, it flew out like like it slid across. Wait, what? So I looked at it. I was like, what? Wait, I ran. I ran out the, the room again. How the fuck did it get there? That's the thing. That's some real paranormal shit, like, bro. I'm, I'm thinking about it. At the time, I thought it was like a rat or like a bug. Because, yeah, because at, at, like there were a lot of like mice. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was an old house, mm-hmm. so like there was a lot of cracks and stuff, and mm-hmm. like all the houses were like attached. Yeah. 
So it would have been like there would have been some like rat infestations, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Damn. But no, flying to you though. But there, w- they, why would the mice or rats yeah. come up to the second floor? Yeah, so it flew out. Into the onto the floor. No, that's scary. And I ran out. That's crazy. And that's the fact that you, so you weren't sharing it. You just had a bunk bed, right? But you weren't sharing it with anyone. Uh-huh. So usually, like you know, the whole theory is like if you leave your if you even have a chair in your room, that's an invitation for any ghost or spirit to come sit down. So it, what? It, so if you had especially a, facing you, yeah, especially facing you. But if even if you had a whole bed, that's free. Any spirit can lay Yo, down. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Because why? Would, I, I remember the reason why my parents bought the bunk bed was because I did a lot of sleepovers. Okay, mm-hmm. my friends, like mm-hmm. like family friends, yeah. cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my grandma would come sometimes. She <clears> sleep <throat> on the bottom. I sleep on the top. Whatever. Yeah. Um, like I played hockey at the time. I had sleepovers with my hockey friends. Like we just all bunk. Yeah. See, yeah. but but once that room oh, is free shit. and it's only you, that's an invitation still. That's crazy, yeah. bro. I know. Yo, yo, <laughs> you know how like on the podcast a long, long time ago, uh-huh. my. I said my aunt's story how um she had this pretty much this psychic because she's a hygienist. Mm-hmm. He became one of like the clients sitting at the at the thing, and then he was pretty much telling her shit like he would not know. Yeah, like oh I know you worked here at this, and I see you living at this house. Blah blah blah. blah. Mm-hmm. So my aunt, she has another story, mm-hmm. and cook my aunt she she kind of has like a sixth sense too. Yeah, so. She had like another client come in and this client, he had really um like wolf gray eyes, like very distinct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very distinct eyes. So he sat down, they're talking, blah, blah, blah. And then she starts getting to work while she's cleaning his teeth. She looks like close to his, his eyes Mm because they were interesting looking, right? Fam, the whole eyes, like both of them turn black pitch black Ew. like straight black this in front of a mirror no this in front of her eyes like oh, what the she's, fuck? she's working on his teeth and looks up like this and sees the eyes are black so what'd she do and then she's like she like gets scared right and uh-huh. then she but she doesn't say anything because it's rude like what well, would she you know what i mean yeah. so she just ignores it and then she looks back and they're still black oh, fuck. so she just continues and does her thing and at some point, like they changed back, and then I guess he, I think he was, he was like, "Oh, what's going on?" Yeah. And then she's like, she said something to to kind of push the conversation, and they switch back. This is the crazy part, though. So you know that story with the psychic mm-hmm. was another client. My aunt went to the secretary and pretty much told the story, like the ghost story, like his eyes turning black. The secretary goes. You know, that's the son of the psychic guy. Oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> so that family is like gifted yeah. in some way. Or no, or knows, like has a spirit. I don't know. Yeah. Fuck, man. Shit Crazy. Spirits. I think I, I, I've made this like correlation. Because remember you said, um, so knocking on wood yeah. actually calls the spirits from the woods, from like the trees, right? Yeah, yeah. And like when I was camping, you didn't know that? Mm-hmm. So knocking on wood is like, uh, you would knock on a wood, you would knock on the tree, and a spirit would come out and grant your wish. Right? That, I've that's been, the I've been knocking on wood. No, but, but, but he like, doesn't do that anymore. Asian, Asian tradition is like you knock on wood to not let something happen. It's like, yeah. a, it's but, like that, a, but that's the urban legend, yeah. right? But then I remember um, we were camping, right? And I, I made this like correlation. A lot, since there's a lot of trees when you're camping, a lot of haunted shit is going to happen in the forest, right? And taking our campsite, was far from everyone else's. Yeah. And you know how right before we were like camp uh in the fire pit and stuff and we were trying to like scare each other and like we were making fun of like oh uh the red lady or the skinwalker and shit like that. Yeah. And then all you s- you hear from like miles away is um a baby cry. Mm-hmm. And oh. I'm like where would that come from, right? And then you would hear a scream, oh, right? Oh shit. And then everyone's like what the fuck is that? And in my head I'm like uh, since I tell all these stories on the podcast I'm like Bro, is that a skinwalker? Like, because the one thing you'd you'd never do is if you hear a baby cry, you never go chase it, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm staying right here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, throughout the night while we were there, all you would hear is like little taps on the grass, and I'm like, no. what the fuck is going on? But then I guess it was um, at the end of the night, a skunk came out. That's what they told me in the morning. But fam, 
that baby cry was so crazy. That's crazy. And then um, there's this viral video going on around on TikTok. Some guy named Samuel who had a crazy like interaction with like a skinwalker, right? Mm-hmm. So he was walking. He he uh, like claimed that he was walking across like um this empty parking lot, mm-hmm. super empty, no one there. Mm-hmm. And some guy called him. He was like, "Hey Samuel," like he knew his name already. And he turned around. And he's like, "What the fuck?" Like. Who, who are yeah, you? Like, what, how what does do you he want know him? Yeah. yeah. And then the the guy, he's like, oh, yo, Samuel, can I borrow a dollar? I know you have one in your wallet. Whoa, what the fuck? So Samuel's like, what the fuck? And he did only have one dollar in his wallet. Yeah. He's like, okay, like, you do you want it? Like, I'll give it to you. Just don't hurt me or anything. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. gives the guy his wallet. And then suddenly he goes, the, the guy goes, do you want to see something cool? Lifts up his shirt. And you can see his tail. What the? And hell? you can see what his the tail. Fuck? And then right after it shows his tail, he goes on all fours and crawls away. Yo, stop, man. What the Crazy. fuck? So like, imagine you're you're out late at night and a guy already knows you that you don't know. That's a hundred percent a skinwalker. That's like a demon, bro. Yeah. It don't follow you. It could be a furry. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Now wants a fucking furry. dollar? No. Oh my god. No, bro. I'm bro. telling you. I'm telling you, bro. But why would a skinwalker want a dollar? Like, what would, no, because like, it's what just, would he do with a dollar? No, because he, it's just trying to like, oh, I know. I don't know. He's just not trying to play mind tricks nah, and fuck. shit like that. Trying to like torment? Yeah, torment. That's the whole th- That's the whole point. Like, as a skinwalker, you're not going to kill the guy. You're just going to make him scared. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel you. Yeah. Damn, do you think? Because a lot of the times, I think, shit, are these things that are put in my path meant to just scare me so... I can become strong. Because if there's That's nothing fucked. to... Think about it, though. If there's nothing to be scared of, mm-hmm. could you ever be brave? No, you couldn't. Right? Yeah. Well, then that would define brave if you're not scared of anything. No, what I'm saying is... Yeah, exactly. Like, with an absence of fear, could you're you not, even be brave? Yeah, you're not brave. Like, if you walk into, like... I don't know, like a party or something. Yeah. You're not scared of anything. You're not brave. You're just, like... Confident. You just walk in... You're, yeah, you just walk into a party. Yeah. Yeah, no, but like that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So there has to be there has to be some set of like you have to overcome something to actually yeah. be. No, I believe that. No one's just no one's just brave out the womb. Like no yeah. one's just confident out the womb, to be honest. Unless it's just um lack of awareness. It's just like you're not you don't you're not I guess you don't have knowledge. Or like you're like a psychopath. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like a sociopath or psychopath. Yeah. I think that's different though. Yeah, that's key. much different, yeah. Yeah. Cause I was watching um there's this thing on Netflix, it's called um how to become a cult leader? <laughs> oh. What the fuck? I yeah, watched that. yeah, I watched that. So you know Jim Jones, the Jones yeah, Massacre. Yeah. I didn't know this, but Jim Jones. You know how everybody has like a superhero, <laughs> like when they grow up, like oh I like Spider Man, oh I like Superman, I like Batman, blah blah. Yo, this motherfucker Jim Jones, he was obsessed with pastors, and that's why he became a pastor. You know what he used to do? He used to go. What? No, no, no. Just keep going. He used to go to to church, right? And after that church session was done, bro would run across town to the next church. The fuck? And see that mass. Then run across town to the next church and see that mass. So it was like video games for him. Damn. But that's how he became freaking like that. Because yeah. he, he picked up on like... There's, there's how to like preach, things. how to like uh, gain, I guess, um, eyes on him, attention, everything like that. And just became the cult leader he is. Yeah. Crazy. Damn, bro. So I think no matter what, like, if if you're super, super into it, and that's, like, what you breathe and well, live in. Thing, people follow passion. Yeah. Right? As long as you, like, believe in what you're saying, and you truly don't care whether or not people are going to believe you or not, people will believe you regardless because you're yeah. so confident in what you're saying. That's you're so true. so passionate about what you're saying. Yeah. People don't realize how strong, like, passion is. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think the reason why people are, like, so lost in this society right now it's because they don't have a passion for they don't anything. Have a passion for yeah, anything. they're kind of lost. Like, like, like there's like, I don't know, like lonely, lonely people, like depressed people and stuff like that. Like the reason why they're not, they're always focused on themselves is because they have no passion. There's not, they're not passionate about mm. something else that they're they can do. Mm-hmm. The minute you give someone like something they love to do, they'll like completely change. They're like a completely different person. They're like yeah. driven. The laziness is gone. Everything is facts. Gone. Facts. I right? agree. And I think, like, that's a big factor in, like, today's society is, like, if there's something you're not passionate about, you're more likely to get lost. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But, like, once you're passionate about something, like, 
literally your 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 opinion on everything, like your world around you, like gets more colorful and like yeah, things sure. like things like matter to you, you know? Yeah, because you're interested in doing good things. Yeah, for exactly. It. Like you have a purpose. Yeah, it's yeah. a purpose. Do you think passion and love is the same thing? Passion and love. I think you need to be passionate to love. Yeah. So it's it's not because without same? without passion, it's just lust, right? But what you what is like passion in a in a relationship? I guess passion in a relationship. But there, there's different types of passion, and I would <clears throat> say, like obsession and passion yeah. different. can be taken differently. Yeah. Like if you're obsessed with like an object, mm-hmm. that just means you have like, you like an, have an emotional attachment to it. If you're passionate about it, you care about it, whatever. But if it's like a like a skill or like like something that like you can be get better at you can get better at or like that makes you just happy Mm -hmm. then obsession is that like i don't know like if you're obsessed with making music you're just gonna make music if you're obsessed with someone it's just gonna like uh, i think obsession obsession has an like a end yeah yeah, yeah. but passion you know if you always love that person it'll go longer does obsession have an end though it does because listen if you're always obsessed with that person and then that person says stop or like that that obsession gives out that's it's done no but people can be obsessed with things though yeah like yeah. What if you're obsessed with like anime yeah and then will it will it ever end yeah probably oh, i don't think so i don't know i think that's I, what i'm saying it's different with people yeah and different with like with with objects. ideas yeah, yeah. ideas people ideas objects are completely different mm-hmm. things to be obsessed or passionate over yeah so is it love or not what passion passion is passion love i think so yeah there's definitely correlates so do you think if you're passionate about too many things what do you mean so okay but are, okay look you love your parents yeah are you passionate about your parents yeah yeah i would what 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 is passionate about parents mean? like i guess for them to be good for them to like i'm passionate for them to to feel good i guess yeah like what's to your be level happy? like of intensity I guess. Mm, I guess I would. Like, yeah, like, I guess I would say you know I, I mean? I'm passionate for them to for them to be happy. That's why yeah. I do yeah. what I do mm-hmm. to make them happy. So I'm passionate about them. Yeah. I guess that way it could be taken differently. I'm it could be taken differently. Why. Exactly. That's always a I good question. Know. It's I a good know. question. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm thinking about it. So if passion is love, if you're passionate about too many things, does that mean you love too many things? Mm. Or are you really passionate about too many things? I feel like you can't be too passionate about too many things. Could you? Why? Not? Why? Because like, because I think there's too much. There's, yeah, there's too, too much on your plate, like, right? Like, if you're passionate about one thing, why would you have to be passionate about the other thing if you're already passionate about one thing? That's a good point. Like, are you even passionate if if it's not on yeah, one? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's different. It's yeah because we're doing objects and people. Because if you say people, I feel like obsession is toxic. Passion is healthy, right? But in objects. You might be obsessed with anime. That could be healthy. Maybe. You know I don't what know. I mean? It could still be unhealthy. But yeah. you know what they say? Obsession always beats passion. That's actually true. Because That is true. Because obsession, If once you're obsessed, you will let nothing stop you. Yeah, that's to fast. To get your, your goal. Which is why I think obsession works better with ideas and like with like, with like, I don't know. Like, like again, let's go back to the music thing. If you're obsessed with making music, you're gonna keep making music if you're passionate about making music, but like let's say it's bad for you mm. in some way, you're gonna stop. You're gonna stop because the passion's not there because usually passion yeah. has something deeper, mm. but obsession just has it's like it's tunnel vision. Yeah, it's like I get obsession that or like I don't. Vision, yeah. Like I get that or I get that. Like sort of in that in that sense. Low key, low key. There was a saying that I heard. It was like, don't make the thing you're passionate about your job because you'll learn to hate it. That yeah. makes that makes so much sense. Really? Yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, but but because you're not thinking of it as a job. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you, if if you make it like a job, if you make yeah. it like a job, like like uh, how yeah. you went to to your drama class, but it's like work. You don't like it. You're yeah. you're gonna yeah. learn to hate it. But you're still passionate about acting. Yes, yeah, just like not that way. It's on a it's like on a schedule. Okay, like yeah. The reason why I'm, and I think the reason why I'm passionate about. My acting and the reason why you're not passionate about your acting is because it's something that is mine. Yeah. Whereas an acting class is like something you're learning. You have to do. You have to yeah. Yeah. I get that. Whereas something that's that's given to me or earned by me to take on to take on. Yeah. That's my thing. Now I have the right to be passionate about it. Mm, but the other thing is like you're just learning to teaching be you. Yeah. Bro's teaching yeah. you to like oh yeah. 
here here's how to be passionate about it. Oh fuck, that's why I don't like, like it. Like it should be effortless, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's why, why I hate the yeah. class. But yeah. when you do your own acting, when it's your own stuff, yeah, then it's, it's like it's, it's back it, to it makes, Yeah, it feels yeah. amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of that's sense. The same thing with a lot of sports, I think. Yeah. 100. When when you're not like in the right sport, you're saying? Or even like when you're like when you're just playing with no pressure and like hundred percent yo. Mm. Pressure is the reason why I quit basketball. Like right. I couldn't handle all the pressure. And then I moved to a sport where it's like, oh, the all the pressure's on me, but at the same time I can have fun. Like when you're having fun, phew, like anything you can do for exactly. a long time. Exactly. Like you'll never get bored of it. You know what I didn't realize? I played double A hockey for like twelve years mm. straight. Yeah. Like before 12 I got is into, crazy. I know, yeah. That's a long before, time. Before I got into acting, I, I was full time hockey. Yeah. Cause I was good at skating. I was allergic to like pollen. Yeah. So I couldn't play soccer, baseball, basically like all the sports. <laughs> Damn, outside, for real, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I couldn't even do golf. <laughs> it was just ice. Like I like uh, winter sports, right? Yeah. yeah. But like I turned out to be good at skating. So mm-hmm. my parents were like, okay, put him in hockey because it's like relevant in Toronto. Mm-hmm. So I carried that on with my whole life. It was my whole life. It was the only thing I did. Yeah. What happens with like, with like a high level sport like that, unless you're like really really good Mm -hmm. it's like the most toxic environment yep and like that goes the same with like every single competitive sport just Mm -hmm. think about it your kid can be good at your at the sport but that doesn't necessarily mean they love it that goes back to the the obsession and passion if your kid let's say is like obsessed and passionate like obsessed and passionate about the sport they're gonna like listen to whatever you you, like whatever the parent whatever like training games practice whatever whatever they they take them to they're gonna love it yeah regardless but once you start treating it like a job, like a nine to five, yeah. the kid learns to like resent it mm. because now it's all like, happened to you. You started resenting. That's what happened it? to me because I was so good at skating, whatever. I was having fun. I was how I was like doing good. And then I remember the thing about me was I could never perform during games. Same. Word. Same. Because was like, it because your parents was watching or like a scout? It, it wasn't even that. It was like I would have good games. Yeah. But like when I'm like scrimmaging and practicing. Mm. You're the I best would, ever. I huh? would destroy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. And then I go to the game, and it would like be like the complete opposite. Bro, you're the, you're, you're a practice you're player. Pressure. Yeah, I'm a practice player. For yeah, some same. Reason. I'm the practice player for basketball. Me. But that's the thing, like the, the idea of like pressure, yeah. and, like actually like loving what you do. Yeah. But once you're like up on stage, it's like completely different. Hundred you know? percent. Yo, you Whoa. you broke yeah. that down so perfect, bro. Yeah. I think that's the difference. Cause I never played a team sport. Yeah, he he never played, so he never yeah. knew what it felt like to like pass around the blame. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean? it was did. always on you. So no matter what, like, you can't, f- you have no excuse. Yeah, you know. But also, growing up, like, whenever my parents said to go into something, I just went into it and just fucking put my head down and just do it, and I learned to love it. Rather than it was never looking back, the only time I really chose my sport or like something I really wanted to do was guitar and soccer for a little bit. Mm. But everything else, like swimming, kickboxing, that was my parents' ideas. Yeah. But I just learned to love it because, fuck, I'm already here. Exactly. Might as well enjoy it. Exactly. But going to that thing of, like, pressure, I think it's the opposite for me. Mm. So because because I didn't have a team, because of everything like that, I couldn't, like, it's all on me. I learned in practice, fam, maybe I didn't even show up that much. Yeah. Like, I wasn't trying as hard. But the moment where it really came down to it, Fuck, I have to put my whole soul into this shit because this is where it really, really matters. And nobody else is going to prove that except for me. Yeah. So if I lose right now, I lose because I lost. Yeah. I think on a team, it's like sometimes I got into my head, it was like, I got to, I wasn't just fighting the opponents. You're fighting your teammates. I was fighting my team. Like, I got to outperform my teammates. I got to be the best one on my team. And I think that's where it becomes yeah. toxic. That, that creates the most toxic yeah. relationship because at a young age, you're, your parents basically program you and they compare you to, ki- to other kids oh, on the mm. team. Facts. Subconsciously, now you resent that kid. Mm-hmm. You resent whatever kid now. Like, even though that guy was on your team, even though which he, made no even sense. Though he's on the same mm. team as yeah. you. Like, it's obviously different with everyone because I know that I know some hockey teams, their parents are like best friends. Yeah. yeah They've yeah, known yeah. each other since high school or like middle school. Mm-hmm. So they're tight, whatever. Mm. But what happens most of the time is parents especially like with competitive sports at a younger age parents will pressure their kids into the sport if they're like decently good if they can keep up mm-hmm. but they'll compare it to the better kid yeah yeah that's wow. once that happens it it wires them to dislike that kid mm-hmm. because you're not like that kid you're not better than him mm-hmm. why can't you be like that kid so it'll wire them subconsciously to resent him yeah or whatever right 
Yeah. Now in the future, when you guys meet again, you're still going to have that same program <laughs> of, wow. of, of like your mindset. Like, I'm, I'm never, oh, he's better than me. You're going to have, <laughs> you're basically going to have an inferiority complex. Yeah. And it's, it goes the other way. Mm. If the kid is better than everyone, their parents are going to be like, don't hang out with them too much. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do your own thing. You're doing yeah. better than them. They're going to have a superiority complex. Whoa. Or the other kids. That's, that's because when I think team about sports it. Sports is toxic. Yeah, no, no, it I'm is, glad it I didn't play no team I know, sports. No, but it's a good way to it, learn. It's, it's a good way to learn. Like team sports, like. What I took from it is like whatever, co- like the 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 regular there skills. was yeah, yeah still like teamwork, collaboration, you know? whatever, yeah. like taking things seriously, yeah. stuff like that. But at the end of the day, like you create like the most, like the strongest bonds, and you just like rinse it with like yeah. toxicity. See, but that there's two cases. Yeah, you can have a team sport because I also had another team. Mm. I love playing ball with yeah. them. Like no one would fight. Everyone is just a homie. Yeah, mm. but then you would get into like. Oh, he's D one. Fuck, I'm not. I'm. I gotta exactly. be better than him. Exactly. I've never told this story, but there was one time that I still like the guy that made me quit basketball. Yeah. Like the Gavin Lore was um yeah. this one guy who was I was never better than, and my dad always compared me to him, right? Mm. And there was one time in practice, right? It was me versus him, and he crossed me up so bad, like my ankle twisted. Oh, fuck. and like it was an actual like ankle breaker. So like the term oh, is ankle shit. breaker, and you actually broke. And I ankle. actually like went to the bench, and all the t- my teammates were like laughing at me like yeah. fuck he he actually broke his ankles and shit like that so from now on like i see him at the barber shop and we we like dap up but at the same time i'm still thinking like this is the guy that made me quit basketball you feel me like i don't Whoa. like i don't like that yeah. guy it does that yeah it does that damn you were so right you you yeah. described everything so perfect the what i realized <laughs> is every every thing like think about it i i've been with hockey teams like my whole childhood yeah. these are my childhood friends if you really think about mm. it i don't talk to any of them yeah. oh yo hundred. i don't talk to none of my ball i friends. talk to like a select two and that's not that's even on a daily crazy, basis yeah. i recently just reconnected with with a guy i played hockey with and then what i realized is we were a shitty team and it's it was the year that the parents stopped caring mm. whether or not their kids were going to, into See? a sport and i i was able to reconnect with him because i realized I didn't care at the time. I just liked playing hockey. Yeah, that's when yeah. I sort of fell back in love with, with with playing hockey because I was decent. Like I could I could mm. keep up my own. Yeah. And like that's when why nothing I, else is on the line, it's yeah, just exactly. passion. <laughs> exactly. It's just fucking passion. Fuck. But that's why like when you look at old like when you see like old people playing sports, it's like I wonder why they do that. It's just like it's just for fun, it's bro. Just for fun. There's yeah, no yeah. Fun, yeah. like there's no toxicity. Even if there was, it's like no one cares. Yeah, fast. It's just you're playing a sport. Yeah. You can I tell mean. you can tell those because uh all the Filipinos in like grade in like high school stopped playing ball. Those were the ones that like <laughs> probably were just like obsessed, didn't have any passion. Because a real Filipino who had passion would keep playing, even yeah. though they knew they weren't making it to the yeah. NBA. See, this guy's like, I didn't I didn't have those problems. <laughs> I was just beating motherfuckers up <laughs> by myself. No, like I, I faced some fucking because my first fight ever I lost. Yeah, yeah. I lost a lot of battles to mm-hmm. like, you know to become strong, to yeah. be like... Damn, I think if I didn't lose my first fight in, in kickboxing, I wouldn't be like this. I feel yeah, like yeah. I'd be freaking... <clears throat> I don't know. I, it's like I would, Mayweather. I, I wouldn't treat hard work well. Yeah. Yeah. Because I knew like after my first loss, because we were just watching the Jake Paul documentary yeah. and how like he lost, man. Damn, it was, it was literally the exact same for me. Like I was bawling my eyes out. I thought like, shit, am I worthy? Well, how come I even like got in the ring, this and that? Yeah. Literally the next month, like I trained so hard, two months actually, trained for, so hard for two months and I won a national championship yeah. because I trained hard because I actually put in the effort. But if I didn't like have a loss to begin with and only won, would I work even as hard? Maybe not. Mm, maybe. Well, that's because it's like, it's almost given to you. It's almost yeah. given. Yeah. When, when, a, when a boxer or a fighter loses their O, that, that's the, like, the real character. Because like, I, never, I never had like a loss. But imagine I had that loss, I would have quit probably. Yeah. It would have tested my character and I would probably would have quit. So you think you think it's good to have a, a loss early? Yeah. Rather than late. It's good to grow it's good to grow up with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you already have that feeling of loss. You have yeah. nothing to lose now. Now you're every, every craving time craving that. Every time I went in the ring, I I had something to lose. Yeah. That was so you all. thought of something to lose yeah. every time. Every time. I was like, I have to win or else my record is done. That's more pressure. Wow. Yeah. And that translates to like everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, even in real life, even, like, life and death situations. Yeah. If you have nothing to lose, you're, like, the most dangerous person exactly. in the world. Exactly. That's very true. You don't want to fight with a yeah. guy who, who has nothing to lose. That's yeah. very, very true. It's because, like, all the rules are out the window. Yeah, like exactly. You, yeah. Straight up, like, it's it's fucking mentality. Yeah. <laughs> it's mentality you're fighting. You're not even fighting nothing else. It's just the straight up fear yeah. driving them to do something. Bro, th- those homeless people on the Nashville, bro. Oh, my God. They went up. Yo, <laughs> that one night we met two. We met two homeless men. Yeah. So we were driving. Bro drives a nice car. And the guy comes up with like, you know, he's trying to clean the windows. Yeah. He's like, yo, let me clean the windows. Ethan's like, no, no, no. <laughs> he's like, no, no. <laughs> Because at the same time, like, you know bro has nothing to lose. So he's going to touch your car regardless. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yo, if, if anything happens, run the red light. Because he's going to fuck up your car. <laughs> you think he's like, break it? Fam, nah, what's like, the worst thing we're going to do? Call the cops? What are yeah, they going to do? Like, no, like, it's not, like, he's basically untouchable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, the bucket and the wiper, like, that that was, like, yeah. his, like, thing, you know? Like, I, I got my car washed, like, literally the day before. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of, like, reversed a bit. But at the same time, like, you don't want to nah, fight, good, like, good. those guys, nah, you yeah. know? Those are the people that fucking they they change the path of where life is headed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> real shit, fam. Even even on the oh my god, this is the funniest moment in the same night. So Ethan puts down his window, and this like homeless guy comes up to the window, and he's like, "Yo, do you have any money?" And as soon as Ethan says no, the song Jason the by Jason Derulo pl- plays. So it's like. Mm, what you say? <laughs> and, and we're laughing at him in the car, and then and he, and he sees looked, that, he turns back. and he kind of like clenches his fist, and we're like, "Fuck!" Did he clenches his fist. He cl- you saw yeah, that you we were a super didn't. villain, bro. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. You because we were laughing. Tomorrow. Yeah, he was that <laughs> staring at the car like, like that, because we were laughing at him. Okay, but low key, like that's so funny. Because yeah. imagine like a homeless man like walks up to you and asks you for money, and you like, "No, I don't got anything," and then like this plays. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 and it, it was on like blast it was on Damn, Max Molly, bro. and I was there's like five dudes in the car and Gavin was like in like uh, we were all dying we were I was all like dying I, bro I was trying to hold it in so bad I was yeah. like I was because like, it, the music blasted as soon as he said oh no <laughs> yo I'm telling you man so fucked I feel like those moments you could really create fucking yeah no it would have uh, ended bad yo you could create like a villain yeah like somebody. <laughs> You know those kids that you hear about, you bully them and they yeah. turn out, yeah. you know what I mean? Evil the rest of the life. That lives. guy would have went on a... Yeah, you don't know what you're mm-hmm. talking about. That's what I'm saying, bro. Yeah. Those times, just be careful still. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you got to really watch yourself because um, I remember too, I was in Dundas and this guy was like, nothing to lose, right? Homeless guy. Takes a brick, whips it at a car. That's not even like facing... Oh, shit. It's a random ass car. So imagine you're in the driving seat. Oh, it just fuck. breaks a glass? Yeah, what can I do now? You know what I mean? It's like holy shit. It's yeah, weird. Same, I, I've I've seen that too. Like some guy on a bike just threw his like bottle at a car. Yeah, and like, just like drove like bike for no off reason. For no reason. And then the guy in the car thought it was like me because I was walking by. Oh, that's damn. Fun. So we walked like this. We were like all like adjacent at as at a certain point. Mm. He whips it, <laughs> the bikes away. The car looks to the right of the window, and I'm there. Oh fuck! But it wasn't fuh. me. Did so you, you almost got in trouble for yeah, it. Yeah, you lo- he was like, he was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I was like this. I was like, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Loki pointed down. That's like, like, like um, <laughs> that's like holes. Like you, you get in trouble. You get in trouble yeah. for something you for didn't something do. For something you didn't do. <laughs> that's Lily holes. Fuck. Damn. But yeah. I will end it there. This yeah, is we'll kind of getting late. I'm, I'm tired. What time is it right now? It's, uh, it's fucking. It's so we, we recorded this at 3:25 a.m. So taken. So we were supposed to record at 2 p.m. today. It ended up being a 2 a.m. podcast. We got but life works. We got but months. good thing because this is a sick podcast. This is a sick Ethan podcast. Came through. <laughs> the, the stories, yeah. insane, bro. Exactly. Yeah. Go, go stream Rice Boy Sleeps, man. Like, go watch that. that. If you're on a plane, yeah. look for this on the Air on Canada? the plane. Air Canada only. Air Canada only. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> when I flew, what's that? I was looking for it. I'm like, fuck. It's, it's not there. <laughs> no, it's on Air Canada, on Crave, and it's on uh, YouTube. Exactly. Ethan Huang, man. All right. You guys can go follow. Oh, shit. I'm in like the middle of a yawn. You guys can go follow him down in the description below. Link to his Instagram. Go check out his movie. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Go check out our Instagrams. Sir, make sure to go to Spotify, Apple. Download those episodes. We love you guys, man. And yeah, jump for jump out. Deuces. Peace. Ew, this guy kissed him like. <laughs>